books and um, we were talking about some recipes and I was so excited about it. I never really even asked you, what are you going to use your syrup for? This again was lavender um, infused um, simple sugar syrup. So what are you, what would you use this for? I would go to the store, buy the nicest fruits I could find, unusual fruits, cut them up, uh, make them look beautiful and drizzle just a little bit over. Do you warm this first before you drizzle it or just use it just like that? I don't. I just use it like that. You could warm it, so okay. that's an option too. And it's always nice to do that actually if you're serving something cold and you have it with something hot. hot. Yeah. Right. Okay. That exactly. extra contrast. You mentioned perfect. teas too, possibly yes, some teas. Yes, absolutely. To put a little of this in some Earl Grey, so you have lavender with the Earl Grey, it's really lovely and you could turn that into a latte, a chai or a tea latte. Latte, Beautiful. Which would be really delicious. And they do that at the Flying Joe. They do. They make okay. their own syrups at the Flying Joe okay. and put it in coffee drinks as well as tea drinks. So. And just for everyone, too, the Flying Joe is at Levis Commons in Perrysburg. So, and you do the brunches there? I do. When? They're on the weekends, Saturday, Sundays, 10 to 2. Okay. And always there's something a little unusual on the menu. So. Wonderful. Okay, so let's talk about this other book that you brought, the other cookbook that you brought. That first thing I see is the colors, and again, cooking isn't necessarily always about taste, but about colors as well. Right, eating with your eyes. So this is this watercress sweet pea soup, and it's topped with a really unusual, you take whipping cream, and you just whisk it a little bit, so it takes you all of 30 seconds. It's okay. not hard to do. Chop up or grind in your processor some rose petals that haven't been treated, right. so organic of course, and then you mix that together with a little bit of salt and it tastes delicious, oh, it gives it a wonderful, wonderful fragrance and the contrast for the eyes is just terrific. So. so this is another beautiful cookbook. It looks like you have marked a number of different recipes. Those are my kind of bookmarks, by the way. Right, thank Paper you. Paper towels, <laughs> you know. Absolutely, whatever's lying <laughs> That's around. That's right, exactly. Right, in the moment. Yeah. Well, I love this idea because we have grapes growing near the house. Okay. And I have one of your wonderful fig oh, trees yes, growing yes. Uh, for a year now, I think. And so we have the leaves at just about all times. I and didn't you know you could eat fig leaves. You can eat fig leaves. Okay. And the thing to do is wrap things in them and grill. And this oh. is, you know, grilling season's just started. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do things like um, little meatballs that you can make out of all sorts of things. Chicken meatballs, turkey meatballs, or lamb, my favorite. Okay. Um, and season them however you'd like and wrap wrap them in the leaves. So you so would boil the leaves a little bit first? I would. Okay. Yeah, just to soften, soften them, up them up a little bit. Very mm -hmm. little, like not even a minute. And then dry them off and then put whatever you'd like. Goat cheese, you could find local goat cheese sure. from Canal yes. Junction. Oh, wonderful. Right, and yeah. wrap that, put a little olive oil on. You can skewer it or not. And wow, beautiful just grill idea. It up. So yeah. easy, so simple, because we're all wondering what to cook and don't want to take a lot of time, so some nutrition, some things. I mean, I just love that you can go to your um, backyard or into the pots you might have growing things and, and utilize what you have because it's so important for us to know where we get our food from, etc. And and to find different ways to make our food go a little bit further. Absolutely. And yeah. see now, just talking to you, you just gave me another idea. So take your nasturtium leaves, which of course are really peppery and right. delicious, edible. You can do the same thing with that. Oh, Get the wonderful. big ones. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Do you have one more recipe that I you do. can show us? Let's see what we have here. Well, we already saw the soup, so we'll skip okay. that one. And well, we'll jump to, speaking of nasturtiums, Sturtium, yes. you can make a salad with grapefruit, avocado, pomegranate when it's in season, sometimes it's hard to find yeah. now, and nasturtium flowers. And the colors are amazing. Aren't they incredible? Yeah. Right. So yeah. Things that you don't usually think about combining. Um, so again, this is, I, I love talking to Deborah because she challenges me a lot in what I'm doing and I... I'm always doing the same types of things and it gets a little boring sometimes so it, this is a great challenge for me to get out and a lot of things I grow use in a new way so hopefully this has inspired a lot of people um, come in let us know what you're doing um, how you're using your fruits your vegetables your herbs um, even your annual flowers your perennial flowers there might be a lot of different things that people are using and I just love to learn from all of my customers so Deborah thank you so much sure. for sharing this and I know I'll be trying a number of new recipes. I'll probably go online and look up some new cookbooks and um, try some different things. So thank you.
another one of the beautiful cookbooks that you are using, and this one's called Aroma. And we were looking at the recipes inside the book a little bit before we started filming, and there are two kind of opposite types, uh, very sweet and, as you mentioned, very savory type of recipes. So why don't we just take a look at those in using lavender? Absolutely. So lavender, I think, is so much like rosemary, really strong essence, and I think if you can use them really interchangeably. Okay. So the, we'll talk about the savory one first. There's a roasted chicken, and it uses lavender. You can you can actually just wing it. You don't need to use a recipe. If you roast a chicken for a dinner, which is a very simple thing to do, you can just gather up a couple stalks of your rosemary, scrunch them up, stick them in the cavity of the chicken. You could take the leaves and the flowers, and you could just chop them up a little bit and put a little olive oil, make a little oily uh, mixture, and just rub it all over the skin, and then roast it, and you'll have this wonderful flavor. And I think I do stuff like this, but I use salt and pepper. Right. And some sage, right. which is so traditional, never thinking outside the box. So right. what a really unique way of utilizing a new herb. Just substituting yeah. Yeah. and playing around, really. I think there are no rules. As long as it's edible, you should just try it. Try it, mm -hmm. exactly. So, And the other one we saw was the, the, the shortbread cookie, which I think a lot of people, you know, with Facebook and all these new recipes and things like that, I think a lot of people have talked about using lavender in their drinks and their cookies now. So that's something very simple. Again, something I haven't tried, which mm -hmm. I would love to try. And it seems like a very simple way of using lavender too. Absolutely, and it's so easy too. You can just take some lavender, put it in your sugar jar, leave it there for a couple days. You could take, uh, and then the sugar is gonna be really fragrant of lavender, or to do it uh, really quickly, just take some sugar, put it in your food processor if you have one, throw some lavender in there, just process it all up put it together and that's it. And so you can use it in all sorts of recipes, sugar cookie recipes. Yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So again, thank you so much for giving us some great ideas, inspiring us as the season hits us. Um, we're starting to grow all these things. So um, hopefully this will inspire people to try some different things. Get out there, get some cookbooks, hold them in your hand, um, look at the beautiful pictures and artwork and um, come in and tell us about some of the recipes that you have been trying.